So if I want to make this network reflective of having gray surfaces or non-black surfaces, I have to add these resistors, right? So you'll see the network looks pretty much the same on the inside where the radiosities are connected. What I've done is I've added surface resistors to each surface. And that takes me from the black body emissive power of the surface to the radiosity. The radiosities still connect the way they did before, but I have this additional resistor that is one minus the epsilon uh, times A uh, times the epsilon. So hopefully that's, that's clear. A couple things to point out here. Um, I guess one thing that I hope is obvious is that, you know, if, if I'm dealing with black surfaces and I look at the value of this surface resistance, I have one minus a black surface has emissivity of one. The surface resistance goes to zero. A zero surface resistance just connects these guys back up again, right? That's a short circuit. And so I limit back to this resistor network here. Um, if I have uh, <clears throat> a situation where maybe I would really like to um, take one of these surfaces and insulate it from its radiation environment. In other words, maybe this surface right here, I'd really like to protect it from radiation from the surroundings. Maybe these surroundings are super hot, and I don't want this surface to get super hot, right? It's being cooled somehow, and I want to, you know, eliminate or reduce the cooling load as much as possible. What should I do to protect this surface, surface 3, from its surroundings radiatively? Well, if I go over here, what I'd like to do, I'd like to take this resistance right here, this RS3, and make it as big as possible, right? Preferably infinity. Infinity means that I am actually um, taking this and making it an open circuit, right? So how do I make this as big as possible? Well, if I look at this, the way I make this as big as possible is I make the emissivity, which sits here in the denominator, I make that as small as possible, right? I'm trying to make this surface as reflective as possible, right? And that gives me the largest value of the surface resistance, and that effectively isolates the surface from its surroundings uh, from a radiative standpoint. When we have um, cryogenic experiments where really the only thing we're worried about in a doer is radiation because we're in a pretty high vacuum, you'll see that those experiments are typically wrapped with um, layers of very reflective um, aluminized mylar. And the idea being that each of those layers gives me another one of these surface resistances, actually two of these surface resistances, and I want those surface resistances to be as high as possible. And if I keep layering, I'm actually you know, stacking those surface resistances up almost in, in series. <coughs> uh, what else? I guess one more thing to point out here <coughs> is um, what would happen if this surface 3 was completely insulated? In other words, I have surface 3, it's sitting in here, and I'm not cooling it or heating it in any way. It just comes to steady state with its surroundings, right? If that's the case, then the net radiation heat transfer from surface 3 has to be zero, right? That's what a steady state energy balance on surface 3 would tell me. So the amount of radiation going through this resistor is zero. And what that means basically is that... Uh, I have what's called a re-radiating surface. I have a, a surface where the value of the emissivity actually no longer matters, right? This surface resistance is not um, zero and is not infinity. It can be whatever it is, right? I can have an emissivity of 0.5, for example. It'll give me a value, but I'm not actually running any energy through this resistor. So whatever that value is, it will not impact the solution that I get for the problem, and that's called a re-radiating surface. So if I have an adiabatic surface, a purely adiabatic surface in a radiation environment, um, what you're going to find is in that limit, because of the boundary condition, the emissivity of that surface doesn't matter, right? And the reason is because you're not putting any energy through this surface resistance, right? So that's kind of a special case. All right, so just like uh, with black bodies, if I have more than three surfaces, um, you know, good luck drawing a, a resistance diagram. In fact, it gets even worse, right? It's much more like spaghetti. So I need kind of a, a formal and easy method to use to derive the set of equations that I need to solve. Um, so before we tried to talk about this uh, for a black 
uh, body and uh, <clears throat> we ended up with this sort of picture here we said let's just look at one of the surfaces that surface goes off and it connects to all these other surfaces through surface to surface resistances and because it was a black body I didn't need um, a surface resistance here right the emiss the black body emissive power and the radiosity were the same so all I had to do was think about these surface to surface resistances and that gave me this equation here. It said that the net radiation heat transfer um, from this surface I is the sum of all the radiation heat transfer through all these resistances, which is this equation here. You know, that was N equations because I would write it for every single surface. And if I coupled that with a set of boundary conditions, I was good to go. So the uh, situation gets just slightly more complicated if I have a gray surface. Um, now I'm still just looking at one surface, right, so that I can, you know, picture it easily. This one surface, um, I put in heat. This is my net radiation heat transfer to surface I. I go through the surface resistance for surface I, and I get to the radiosity for surface I. And then the radiosity for surface I is going to interact with all the radiosities for all the other surfaces through the same set of surface to surface resistances. So what are my equations now? Well, I get one equation associated with this resistor. It says that Q dot I is EBI minus JI divided by RSI, or if I substitute in for RSI, it gives me this equation, and I can then write that equation for every single surface. So here's N equations. And then I get another equation associated with Q dot I being the sum of the heat transfers through all of these resistors. Right, so Q dot I is the sum from J equals I to N of the radiosity from surface I minus the radiosity of surface J divided by the resistance between those two surfaces, right? And if I plug in the definition of Rij, I get this equation here, which looks almost the same as this equation here, except for instead of black body emissive powers, here I have radiosities. And again, this is N uh, equations. So here's N equations. Here's N more equations, right? So I have two N equations. How many unknowns do I have? Well, I have uh, 3N unknowns now, right? I have the same ones I had before, Q dot and temperature. EB is temperature, right? But then I have one more set of unknowns, which are all my radiosities. So I'm still N equations short, and those last N equations come, again, from uh, boundary conditions, right? So for every one of these surfaces, I have to know either the temperature, which gives me the black body emissive power, or the heat transfer rate, Right? Or I got to know some kind of relationship between them, which is more typical. Uh, and if I have one of those for every surfaces, then I have three n equations and three n unknowns, and it becomes relatively easy to solve. So, what we'll do next is an example that actually, um, uh, you know, basically what we'll do is we'll do the same example we did before for black surfaces, and we'll just do it again for the case where the surfaces aren't black. And you'll see that, you know, it doesn't change a lot of the problem in that we still have to get the areas and the, and the view factors. The only part of the problem that really changes is you add one more set of equations and then you hit solve. So, so actually solving these problems doesn't, uh, is not that much more complicated than solving black body problems.